Encampment organizers, they voiced their concerns to members of the media earlier today. So the organizers say that the University of Toronto administration is failing to negotiate with them in good faith. The pro-Palestinian demonstrators, they want the school to divest from any companies that support the war in Gaza. Well, organizers are also accusing Toronto police of likely violating human rights by using night vision and facial recognition technology to surveil encampments. Experts in digital and urban security on our campus have confirmed that Toronto Police Service are, are using audio and visual monitoring night vision to surveil the camp, to surveil their students, faculty and staff on their own campus, likely including facial recognition technologies. Our legal and human rights scholars at the University of Toronto believe this form of policing likely contravenes human and labour rights and collective agreements for faculty, staff workers and students, and also turns the university from a space of free exchange of ideas into a space of the criminalization of dissent that contravenes the purpose of the university. Now, with over 100 universities across the world holding encampments, the Student Front for Liberation of Palestine has made it clear that we will no longer tolerate injustice. This is about the values we hold to ourselves, justice, equity, and liberation for us all. We can't just talk about these ideals. We have to live them, breathe them, and fight for them. So let us make this crystal clear. We will not move, we will not be pushed aside, and we will not rest until our demands are met and the University of Toronto is held accountable. First of all, I want to say that this has been an incredibly inspiring space of multiracial and multi-faith collaboration. It's also been a space where faculty have been here in large numbers, where campus labor has been here in support, where student unions are standing in solidarity. It is an incredible space where the students are modeling the very kinds of futures and relations that we so desperately need in this moment. CB24 has reached out to Toronto Police for comment, but we haven't heard back just yet. Well, pro-Palestinian demonstrators, they marched onto the University of Toronto's downtown campus last night. Demonstrators, they walked right past campus security, which had set up vehicles blocking the entrance to the school's grounds just north of College Street. And some people lit flares as they marched their way to King's College Circle. This is where pro-Palestinian encampment has been set up since last week. Well, the campus protesters want the university to end ties with Israel and Israeli organizations. And Toronto police tell CP24 that there were some officers in the area just to monitor the situation at the request of the university. The encampment at the U of T has left Jewish students and faculty feeling unsafe on campus. Some say they've been attacked and refused entry, and many say they've experienced anti-Semitism. Hundreds are expected to attend a rally against hate this evening near the school. And a new poll suggests nearly half of Canadians are opposed to the pro-Palestinian encampments on university campuses. Just 31 percent of respondents in the Leger survey say they support the protests, while a third of people polled say the encampments should come down if protesters voice anti-Semitic views or hate speech. Support for the protests is strongest among respondents under the age of 35. And Vaughn Mayor Stephen Del Duca spoke this morning about a bylaw in the works that would prevent violent and hateful protests from being set up outside schools, hospitals or places of worship. I want to be very clear about this. My resolution does not seek to ban peaceful protests or demonstrations including those that might occur as part of a labor union strike. These, these will continue to be permitted. My goal is to prevent those protests that clearly cross the line, protests that are no longer peaceful, protests that intimidate our residents, protests that are designed to incite hatred or violence, protests that, in my opinion, our charter was never designed to protect. The proposed maximum fine for violating the bylaw would be $100,000.